Alright guys, well what you just heard right there was um, actually what one of these <clears throat> can sound like when they're broke. Uh, and um, actually sounded pretty cool if, if you you know if you ask me. Um, <laughs> but um, hopefully by the end of this video I'm going to show you guys what these can sound like when they're working. Um, but um, for those of you who don't know, this is a Line 6 DL4, well the board for one anyway. Um, a friend of mine had asked me if they could repair um, it for them. I, I, I've I owned one of these for a long time. I'm a, For those of you who don't know, I'm a guitar player. I've been playing for about over 10 years. Um, I haven't been playing so much lately, but anyway, a friend of mine ha had actually given me two of these to repair. This is one of them. Um, now, he had said one of the... the these have a, a mono... Um, well, they have left and right input so you can play them in mono and stereo uh, and he had told me that one of the channels wasn't working um, <clears throat> but when I plugged this thing in it wouldn't even bypass a clean signal um, on either channel and so he did give me two of these and you know maybe he got the one wrong actually the other one that I have doesn't doesn't power it uh, doesn't work at all it powers on but it, it you know, it it, it it's, seems to be in potentially much worse shape. But anyway, um, so you know, I I I um did some investigating, did some probing around with my multimeter. Now, having one of these already was helpful. Um, you know, because I could compare it to the one I own. Um, but I found out pretty quickly that there was definitely something going on wrong with the um the output stage mainly this um this precision op amp right here um <clears throat> it was getting some re weird voltage readings so um it's a i think it's a tlc 272 or something like that but um i replaced that um and also replaced this input stage op amp as well um and in the process of doing that, um, and had to remove one of these resistors because it was measuring funky. Um, but I pulled a pad up, and so I had to um, solder in that through hole resistor. Also, <laughs> was had to test this relay, and also pulled a pad up. So I had to install this jumper wire, which I will tell my friend about. Um, you know, you got to be careful, of course, when you're well, when you're soldering anything. It's very easy to apply too much heat and lift a pad, uh, so that you know. But you you know you learn as you go, and and when you do have those issues, you 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 learn how to repair them, like like this here, for example. But but yeah, so um, you know, these are notorious for not being reliable. Um, you know, they can have a number of different issues. Um, one thing that goes bad with these is the switches. Um, the switches for these are in really good shape still. Um, but under these black little covers, they're just these little tactile switches. Um, and so I've even 
replace these with beefier switches on my own. But these are actually in... I don't remember mine, the tactile switches on mine being in... These look like they're a little bit more... Um, I don't know, they're just... A, 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 from a better manufacturer or just different quality, but I like these a lot. I like the feel and how snappy they are. I actually like these originals better than the ones that I the the upgrade that I did on mine. So, you know, if you don't have a problem with them, don't worry about it. But it's just something that to be to be on the lookout for. And you know, if you do want to do a mod like that, I've seen them on YouTube. I, I would recommend if the the I can pull the show you guys a bit more about the switches but these these are what they look like so you can see they've got these little springs and then on top you know so yeah if these springs are still in good shape you know I, I would just replace the tactile switches which they're under these little black covers and Find one from a good manufacturer and, 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 and do that instead of, um, you know, using a, a bigger switch and connecting wires to the to the board. That's that's what you're going to find on YouTube. I've seen people do the, the mod like that, and that's how I did it years ago. But I might change it back to these to tactile button switches. I still have the old, the old parts. Um... But yeah, that's one thing that can go wrong with these. Um, another thing that I've seen on YouTube is this um, this EEPROM chip, which has the flash memory, all the the ROM memory, the firmware for for the DL4 is in that chip. Um, I've heard that, and I've never experienced this before myself, but I've heard that any a majority of the time when these things are dead, just reseeding this chip will solve the problem. And I mean, that's awesome if that's what happens. That wasn't the case with this one. Uh, it may be the case with the other one, but I have seen people on YouTube just, you know, kind of finagle these out using whatever tool that they have. Um, and that's problematic because you're really supposed to have a, an a specific extractor tool um, to remove these types of chips and you know I, I can put it in the comments I forget what it's called right at, in the um, description I forget what it's called off the top of my head but that's really what you want to use and it basically has these two little grabbers that will just lift the chip up from both sides so that way you're not damaging any of these socket pins or any of the pins on the chip itself, because these are really delicate. It could be very easy to break them, and you might be in an even worse situation than you were when you began. So I would not try to remove one of these just on the way the way I've seen some people do it on on YouTube. And and look, it they've it, they showed it worked, which is great. But you know, you might not get so lucky if you try that. So if you are gonna try that, use that tool. Um, you'll have much better luck. Um, or, you know, if it is really that, you could also try, if you are if you can solder, replacing one of these sockets, which I might give it a try on this other board that I'm working on because on the other one, everything looks great. Um, all the clock um, frequencies measure um, fine. Um, you know, the, the input and output stages are testing fine all the capacitors are good the power um supply section is fine so it might be something like that with the um with the other board uh the other dl4 that i'm working on um but yeah i mean another thing that's awesome about these is i was able to find the schematic for for this online and it also um the schematic the one that i found at least gives a test procedure for these which i didn't know was a thing until i tried to repair one of these anyway the test procedure is done by before you plug in the um 
your one quarter inch jack to the to the uh, forget if it's the right is it the right let me see yeah the left uh, out input um, so this also by the way um, acts as a uh, power on switch so when you plug this guy in it will power up the um, the, the pedal but anyway before you plug that one fourth inch cable in hold down the a switch and plug it in this led which is known as the d led a b c d should light up and that means that it's in test mode and this schematic that i found gave you all these tests that you can do um, you can test the buttons, the LEDs, all the, the pots, the encoder, um, to make sure it's all working. Um, what's interesting though is that it, I think it has up to like 12 tests, um, but it only goes up when I was testing this, it only went up, it only gave me 10 tests to try. And I even tried this on the one that was working and the same thing occurred. There's also a frequency test. So you can test the input and outputs. That test didn't work. Even on a working one. So, uh, you know, that, that and that's actually what I... That was the only thing that was wrong with this one. and I, So I couldn't troubleshoot that, which kind of sucked. But it does have some other things. Like it, it can test to make sure the flash memory, it's, it's reading that, which is great. So you can rule out a problem with this chip. Um... So, so yeah, very helpful and, and handy to have. Um, and before I wrap up here, one last thing I just reminded me of something. The power supply that comes with these. So most guitar pedals are powered by a DC power supply. Um, so if you've got one of these and, you know, you want to hook it up to your pedal board, you have, like, a big power supply for your pedal board, if it's DC... You can't use you can't hook it up to this. This should only take nine volts AC, which is a little bit unique. Most guitar pedals, like I said, are DC power sources, um, and so actually with these these diodes here, they they um, rectify the AC to DC. These big diodes here, um, that's what they're for. So yeah, you, that could be another easy way to destroy these if if you're not careful. Make sure you use the uh, original power supply or power with the batteries, or if you can't, if you don't have access to the Line 6 one, or you don't feel like spending the money on it, try to find a 9 volt AC, AC power adapter. But yeah, that's everything. I'm gonna do another a little additional video after this, showing you it in, it in action. Um, I am. This is not a review of this pedal. I, so, you know, the guitar work is not very good, um, but just to show that it's working and, you know, if you've never used one before, some of the things it can do, it's pretty cool. I love it for the looper function, but the delays are cool too, but all right.